Hi, Carmen Alvarez, 8 Millwood Court, Monroe Township. How are you? I have a few comments I want to make, not any questions. Uh, when I first began my career as a school social worker 23 years ago, I happened to be assigned to work in my neighborhood school. While there were many benefits to this assignment, including being able to walk to work, going home on my lunch hour, and recognizing the immediate needs of the community, there were also quite a few challenges. As an example, I was asked to schedule a meeting with a parent of a child who was caught stealing cookies off her classmate's lunch tray. Unfortunately, this child was my next door neighbor, and I had a personal relationship with her family, which created an awkward situation for the both of us. More seriously, I was asked to contact DCPP because the child of another neighbor had reported abuse. Having personal relationships with these families made it difficult for me to perform my job duties. <clears throat> As a result, I asked to be transferred the following school year to a school in a neighborhood different from mine. The Monroe Township School District is now in a similar situation. While it is true there are benefits to having a township resident serve as the superintendent of our schools, I can only imagine there are also many challenges. I cannot speak for Mrs. Chanley, but during her tenure as principal of the middle school, I can imagine she too found herself in situations similar to mine. As a longtime resident of Monroe, I can also imagine she has formed personal relationships with many parents and staff members. Some of these parents are now sitting on our board, and Mrs. Chanley is their employee. When I first moved to Monroe in 2015, my oldest son was a middle school student. It quickly became evident to me and other parents that there was a personal relationship between Mrs. Skirby and Mrs. Chanley when a second parent or organization was created after Mrs. Skirby failed to win re-election as president of the PTA. Just last month, photographs surfaced on social media of the superintendent attending a private event at the residence of the board president. Not only does this raise eyebrows in the communities, but it also creates the appearance of impropriety in the view of the public and puts our board and school district in a, posi <clears throat> in a position vulnerable to scrutiny and further ethics complaints, all of which come at a cost. The School Ethics Act is clear when it says board members and administrators must avoid conduct which is in violation of their public trust or which creates a justifiable impression among the public that such trust is being violated. Today I speak to those of you who will remain on the board along with any board member elect that will be involved in the reorganization meeting in January. <clears throat> Please seriously consider my comments and concerns when voting on the next board president and vice president. Please know that I do not make these comments with ill intent. Instead, they come from a place of true concern. Thank you for your time.